Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on measures of leverage. Leverage is the use of fixed costs in a company's cost structure. Fixed costs that are operating costs create operating leverage. Fixed costs that are financial costs, primarily interest, create financial leverage. For a highly leveraged firm, a small change in sales will have a big impact on earnings. A few basic concepts of risk. Business risk for a given entity consists of sales risk and operating risk. So business risk is the risk associated with operating earnings. It's both a combination of sales risk and operating risk. At least per the CFA definitions, sales risk refers to variability in profits due to uncertainty of sales price and volume. Operating risk is the risk attributed to the operating cost structure. So if the fixed operating costs are high relative to variable costs, then the operating risk is high. Financial risk is the risk associated with debt financing. Companies that take on a lot of debt financing will have relatively high financial risk. Now let's talk about the concept of degree of operating leverage in a little more detail. So degree of operating leverage is the percentage change in EBIT or operating profit divided by percentage change in sales. So if we say that the degree of operating leverage of a given entity is equal to 3, this means that a 1 percentage change in sales volume will, uh, will lead to a 3 percent change in operating profits. So the higher this leverage, the greater the impact of a 1% change in sales. And as we'll see, companies that take on more fixed cost tend to have higher degrees of operating leverage. So the other formula that you need to know for degree of operating leverage is equal to Q, which is the quantity of units sold into P minus V. This is the price at which units are sold. V is the variable cost. So P minus V is sometimes referred to as the contribution divided by again Q into P minus V minus the fixed costs. So these are the operating fixed costs. Uh, the cost of setting up the factory and so on. This does not include finance costs. So you need to know both these formulas when we talk about degree of operating leverage. Okay, now let us just use a few numbers. Let's say that for company A, uh, let's say that in a given year, it plans to sell a quantity equal to 10,000. So let's say company A makes cricket bats and they, want, they plan to sell 10,000. Let's say that the price of one bat is $100 and let's say that the variable cost of each bat is 70 and let's say that the fixed costs for this company equal 200,000. Now given the formula, the degree of operating leverage will be 10,000 multiplied by the contribution P minus V which is 30 divided by again Q into P minus V so 10,000 into 30 minus the fixed costs which are 200,000. So this becomes uh, 300,000 divided by 100,000 which is equal to 3. Now what we are saying here is that at a quantity of 10,000, the degree of operating leverage is 3. So if at this stage the company can increase sales volume by 1%, then the operating profit will change by 3%. 
what I want you to do now is notice the following use different numbers for quantity and you will notice that degree of operating leverage changes with different uh, quantities for uh, so with different quantities so that's one point another point is then uh, make this uh, use this expression for another company B which has say a higher fixed cost so let's say that for company B the fixed cost is equal to 250,000 so again go through this exercise calculate the degree of operating leverage for company B with fixed cost equal to 250,000 but for company B since it's invested more let's say that price is the same so let's say it's making also making cricket bats but just the process is more mechanized so there is a greater investment and since the process is more mechanized let's say then that the variable cost is a little lower so rather than being 70 the variable cost is 60 you will notice that the degree of operating leverage is going to be higher for company B and this also means that the uh, the operating risk for company B is higher because it needs to make at least or it needs to sell bats worth at least 250,000 uh, in order to uh, make an operating profit. A couple more items. What happens to degree of operating leverage if we have no fixed costs? So if we have no fixed costs, F is zero and then you notice that degree of operating leverage simply becomes one, which essentially means that if there is no fixed cost, then there is no leverage what happens to degree of operating leverage when sales go up so here what i want you to do is look at exhibit six so exhibit six in the curriculum and you will see a nice picture of the relationship between uh, between quantity on the x-axis and the um, and the degree of operating leverage on the y-axis so that's a suggested to do you can first plot this out given uh, given these numbers and then take a quick look at exhibit 6 operating leverage so generally high upfront investment so high fixed cost which is what we just talked about leads to high operating leverage and we will see this in pharmaceutical companies software companies where the fixed costs are very high and the variable costs are low compared to selling price so the contribution margins are higher retail companies consulting companies etc have relatively low upfront costs but high variable costs and hence the operating leverage for these companies will be low Next, let's talk about financial risk and financial leverage. Very simplistically put, companies that take on a lot of debt have high financial leverage and high financial leverage leads to relatively high financial risk. So as mentioned earlier, financial risk is the risk that a company takes on because of having debt in its capital structure. So the basic formulas for degree of financial leverage that you need to know are as follows degree of financial leverage is equal to the percentage change in net income divided by the percentage change in operating profit so again if we say degree of financial leverage is equal to 2 this means that a 1% change in EBIT will create a 2% change in net income so this is one formula that you need to know and the other formula that you need to know is is uh, q into p minus v so again quantity price sold variable cost minus the fixed operating costs divided by the same thing q p minus v minus f and now there is an additional c c stands for the interest related cost so here again notice that if we have no debt then c will be zero and the degree of financial leverage will be one on the other hand if we take on high levels of interest uh, high levels of debt that will mean high interest high c denominator becomes small relative to the numerator and degree of financial leverage goes up so 
continuing with the example that we just saw let's say that the same company which makes cricket bats so quantity again let's say we plan to sell 100,000 and we have uh, again price equal to 100 variable cost equal to 70 and fixed cost was equal to 200,000 now we also have an interest cost equal to 50,000 so in this case the degree of financial leverage becomes Q into P minus V which was 100,000 into P minus V which is 30 minus the fixed cost which is 200,000 divided by the same thing uh, 300,000 minus 200,000 which is 100,000 minus C which is 50,000 so overall we get 100,000 over 50,000 which is 2 degree of financial leverage is 2 so coming back to the interpretation above we are saying that if we can increase our operating profits by 1% then our net income will go up by 2% Next, let's talk about the effect of financial leverage on net income and return on equity. So this is fairly straightforward. Let's say that uh, company A initially has zero leverage uh, or actually rather than saying zero leverage, let's say it has zero debt in its capital structure. And now if it in goes from zero debt to let's say 50% debt and 50% equity so without getting too de detailed into the numbers just uh, qualitatively let's understand what happens when a company goes from zero debt and 100% equity to a capital structure that it's where it's relying heavily on debt what will happen to net income so net income will clearly come down because there is a interest cost however when we talk about return on equity that formula is net income divided by equity and notice that even though net income is going to come down a little bit because of interest cost but uh, so this comes down a little bit but our equity comes down a lot because we are essentially now you know let's say if our assets were worth 100 million then our in this case equity would also be uh, high but here we are now funding our assets partly by debt partly by equity so the equity base comes out uh, comes down a lot and net income over equity will generally go up when we have when we take on uh, when we take on debt so so what it's this this might seem like a good thing that roe is going up but clearly there is risk involved because this 50 percent debt will mean that there is a certain fixed interest charge that we need to pay and if the company does not make sufficient operating uh, income to cover the interest charge then obviously the net income will be negative so while this is a learning objective statement defined in the curriculum there aren't really examples done for this so I believe as long as you understand the overall principle described here, you are in good shape. And this should also remind you of the ROE formula that we, uh, or the breakup using the uh, DuPont relationship. And if you recall higher the leverage, that creates ROE to be higher. So as long as you understand this big picture, I think you are in good shape. If you want to do some numbers, then uh, as long as you are studying from Schweizer notes, there are some good examples there on, on these numbers. Uh, do that if you have time. Otherwise, just understanding the big picture is uh, most probably going to be good enough for you. Degree of total leverage. So degree of total leverage is the... Uh, so DTL is the percentage change in net income divided by the percentage change in sales. So this is essentially combining degree of operating leverage as well as degree of financial leverage. So another way of writing DTL 
is that it's degree of operating leverage multiplied by degree of financial leverage and the third and final way of writing this is the following formula so this is q into p minus v divided by q into p minus v minus f which is the operating fixed costs minus c which is the charge on debt so this is the fixed interest related cost uh, i won't go over the previous numbers but it might be a good idea for you to just plug in the the q p v f and c from the earlier examples and verify that the degree of total leverage does turn out to be uh, equal to degree of operating leverage which we calculated as 3 times degree of financial leverage which we calculated as 2 so you should get an answer of 6 when you plug in over here and I also want you to take a look at exhibit 14 in the curriculum which shows a picture of uh, so as you increase the so what what exhibit 14 is going to show you is pictures for as you change quantity how does degree of operating leverage degree of financial leverage and degree of total leverage how do they change so that's a good picture to look at break even quantity most people should be familiar with this the idea is fairly straightforward so let's say that this is your quantity and this is the dollar amount for any firm let's say as as it's selling more quantity this is the total revenue line so the more we sell the more uh, money we make so this is total revenue and let's say that this is the total cost line so this is total cost line so total revenue total cost this area represents if we are to the this is the break even point if we are to the left of break even that means we are making a loss if we are to the right of break even that means we are making a profit so if we are at this point x then our profit is this amount if we are at point y in terms of how much we can sell then our loss is this amount break even point simply is how much must we sell so that our profit or our net income is zero sometimes you might also be asked about the concept of operating break even so operating break even would simply be the how much must we sell so that all our operating costs are covered but generally when we refer to break even we are talking about that quantity at which are uh, all our costs be they operating be they financial so all of them need to be covered that's the break even point so that is essentially it what uh, what you need to do as always is practice a lot i think this is a fairly straightforward reading but still practice is important you practice enough and then you will be a happy person uh, curriculum examples are uh, good for this chapter so go through those do the 16 or 17 questions at the end of the curriculum if you have comments on this video please post them on youtube if you like this video, please click on the like button. Thank you and that's it.